What is going on, ladies and gents? Welcome back to the channel. I am Lonnie from Flight Sim Gaming. Today we are doing a flight here in Saskatoon, headed down to Vancouver in the RJ CRJ 900. Uh, it's a real world flight flown by Air Canada Jazz. I have the call sign up top for those interested in uh, flight tracking. I don't think I have any anybody in the community here that does, but anyway, I always include that. Uh, you know, as the description of my videos say. Or as my channel says, we do real-world flights, but sometimes our procedures aren't real route. Uh, but anyway, we are here in the RJ. It's been a minute since we've been in this aircraft. It's a good little aircraft. You know, it needs some fine-tuning. The pitch access is very twitchy, and the rudder sensitivity is a little sensitive. And, you know, But other than that, the aircraft gets you from point A to point B. Um, the Collins FMC, um, FMS, McDo, whatever you want to call it, needs a little bit of work with the Direct 2. Waypoints. Um, other than that, a pretty solid aircraft. You know, it's something different. Definitely keeps your hands full. There is no auto throttle on this aircraft, so and that's one of the key things to it. Uh, if you can fly this aircraft, you can fly any aircraft. So I do recommend getting it. Um, but anyways, let's jump inside the cockpit. Let's get the aircraft all ready to go for departure. I uh, already have the battery switched on. Uh, GSX is doing its thing here. So let's come down here. Uh, pause in it. We'll take the started. FMS pause. We'll plug it in. Come over to the flight plan tab here. Um, we're departing out of Saskatoon. We're heading to Vancouver. Uh, call sign Jazz. 7747. Uh, plug that in the flight number area. We'll execute. Bam. Uh, we'll come over to the departure tab here. We're departing off of the Saskatoon 8 departure for runway 15. We'll execute that. If we come over to the flight plan tab here, we'll go to the second page. We'll plug in our sim brief info. Sorry for that pause. Uh, direct Ovata. From Movata, it is going to be a direct Borix. From Borix, it is direct Spray. From Spray, it's the arrival for uh, the ILS-08 right approach, which we are expecting. Anything can change. Um, again, anything can change. Uh, so the Canuck 5 arrival for ILS 08 right will execute that. Come over to the flight, back to the flight plan tab here. Actually, we'll come to the legs page. Uh, we will clean up any of these weird discons. There's going to be some of this here, which is weird. Um, don't know why it does that. But uh, nevertheless, we clean it up. Perf in it. Let's go ahead and plug in our fuel and wait. Change to zero fuel weight. Estimated zero fuel weight, 29,680. We'll enter that and our fuel, 5,083 kilograms of fuel. We'll enter that. Set payload in simulator. Copy perf init data to FMS. Uh, we'll set our V speeds. V speeds are set. Uh, we have our fuel and our weight all plugged in. Uh, we're climbing up 30,000 feet. Execute. Come over to the VNAV setup tab here. Uh, this is our target speed information, our trans alt. All looks well. It's 18,000 here in Canada. Same as on our descent. And uh, that's sort of about it. Come back up here. It's Get all of this ready. Initial climb. Uh, 5,000 feet. We'll plug that in. Runway heading is 150. And the weather information. The winds are 150 at 7. Visibility 15 miles. Few clouds at 30,000. It's minus 7. Altimeter 2997. 7. Two nine or nine or seven, two nine or nine or seven, two nine or nine or seven is all plugged in. Stab trim, mock trim, 
yaw dampener all plugged in uh 122.8 and we are squawking 2000 we will make sure all of that is good to go if we do our checklists here uh apu power fuel switch on we'll wait for the door to open it's open so we're gonna go ahead and start it While our APU is spooling up, let's come over to Navigraph here. Let's have a look at our departure. The Saskatoon 8 departure, it's pretty much runway heading. Um, we'll maintain 5,000, expect radar vectors to file the sign route, expect clearance to flight plan altitude. 10 minutes after departure, that's really about it. Uh, again, the winds are 150 at 7. APU is on. Uh, gen switches are going to be on auto. Uh, nav and logo lights are on. I'll throw the beacon light on now as well. We have all of our signs on. Uh, let's come back up top here. Packs left and right on. Recirc on. Uh, windshield heat are going over to low. Thrust reversers, we are going to arm them. Uh, we got our stab trim and mock trim all set. And our yaw dampener is set. And we're waiting for boarding to complete. But what we can do is we'll come back down here. Remove all of our wheel chocks. Disconnects our GPU. Landing elevation. I think it's 13 in Vancouver. So we'll set it to 20. Waiting for the baggage loading to complete, which it has. Close all the doors. Boarding complete. Come over to GSX. We'll prepare for push. Don't need any anti ice. Let's make sure our left and right boost pumps are on. And our hydraulics can go over to auto and on. And we'll make sure we have runway heading Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. is set. V speeds are set. Beautiful. Bypass pin is inserted. So because we are... Uh, oh, by the way, I am doing the next-gen mod. Uh, as you can see, we're getting close to 100 FPS. This aircraft doesn't need it. Uh, this aircraft has really good performance. But there are some bugs to be expected. One thing I had noticed, ground textures are a little broken sometimes. So far, it looks good. Um, if you pan around too fast, certain things start ghosting. But all in all, it's a smooth experience. And, uh, yeah, it kind of sucks for NVIDIA. The fact that AMD has put out their own version of Next Gen and released it to the general public um, kind of makes them look stupid, in my opinion, because they said that the Next Gen was only exclusive to the 40 series cards. But clearly, you know, we're here with the RTX 20 and 30 series cards. Release parking brakes, please. Commencing push. Um... Ignition on. Right side engine is coming on. We need to wait for a 20% N2 before we introduce fuel. By the way, I haven't set my trims yet. We'll make sure we get that momentarily. Trims are 6.9. 20% N1.
these textures here are sort of part of DX12. Very glitchy. I won't worry about that. Um, 6.9 on the trim. I'm going to lower that trim value. 6.1 just because the aircraft is a bit spicy on rotation. IT rising, go engine number one, over to on. Ladies and gentlemen, please pay attention as we display the safety features and procedures on the aircraft in case Once again, 20% end tube before we introduce fuel. Please remain in your seats with your seatbelt fastened and your seats in the upright position. In case of a drop, have it. pressure breathing masks will drop from the ceiling and should be placed over your head. It's the anti-icing stand here. Uh, this is modeled in from some add-ons. Engine number one is rising. Parking brake set. Two very good engines. Let's come back up top here. Um, beacon light is on. Engines are on. Perfect. Uh, before taxi checklist. Pro heats. We'll get them on. Anti-ice as required. Taxi lights on. APU start, stop. Off and off. Ignition can come off. Flaps eight. Some quick flaps, man. Some quick flaps. We'll click this guy here. Tow truck disconnected. Bypass pin removed. And ladies and gentlemen, think we're ready to rock and roll here. Left is clear. Transponder, right is clear. we are still standby. Left is clear, right is clear. Now, I don't remember if this aircraft has, like, a recall check. I thought it did. I just don't remember. I don't remember if it did or didn't. Oh. Let's not worry about it. Our V speeds are in. There's the checklist here. I'm following this checklist on my phone. Have a good trip. Park brake coming off. Uh, parking brake is off, Navigraph charts is on, and taxi routing, we are rolling, I can see it. Uh, taxi to runway 15, we're going to go alpha, make a left on alpha, uh, to runway 15, make a right on there, backtrack it, and then on out for good old departure. Let's get going. Taxi lights are on, everything is as it should be. Good old CRJ-900. A lot of these aircrafts um, flying into Pearson. I enjoy seeing them. A lot of the 700s from United, as well as American Airlines. The 900s are exclusive to Air Canada. Uh, the odd time you get the 200 that comes in. Uh, right now, if I'm not mistaken, Air Canada Jazz is uh, hiring new pilots. And what I mean by that is they're not looking for people with a PPL. They're specifically looking for people who want to get into aviation and want to uh, fly an airliner. And they're fast-tracking sort of that step currently with the program that they have. Uh, I believe it's two years of um, pilot training. It's about $125,000. Fast track in CRJ 200.
Uh, it's currently the cheapest way at the moment. It's about 150 grand before you can uh, work your way up to an airliner. But the problem is that I hear with Jazz um, salary, right? So you're paying $125,000 and allegedly a 50K salary here in Canada, 50,000 Canadian dollars. Flies the first officer with uh, Jazz. Could be wrong. Um, I mean, I do know the pilot situation in Canada is a little crazy. Uh, captains don't make as well. Pilots in general don't make as well compared to some other places. I know the U.S. pays very well. Um, I have a buddy who has a cousin that is now an A220 captain for JetBlue. And he, he flies out of JFK. And, you know, they start off at... A first officer will start off at about eighty thousand USD starting. You know, once you you know after a couple of years, you can make onwards up to two hundred thousand dollars USD. That doesn't uh, that doesn't compare. You know, that doesn't compare in terms of what the salary should be in other countries. Their Canada needs to step it up. He also pilot that I know had also applied for Air Canada, but. Salary again. Salary is a big problem. I don't know how you can sort of think, you know, to get a license to fly. Just the PPL here in Canada is about twenty thousand dollars. Plus, you know, if to work up to the airliners, there's other certifications that are required. By the end of it, you're about 150 G's in. It's a little crazy to think that all that money spent just to make 50 K. For probably four years, I'm sure with what Jazz is trying to do with his fast tracking pilots, you probably it's probably a contract for four years or more. So you have to stay with them. Which doesn't make any any sense. But my point is, uh, you're training in the CRJs. I believe you're also training in the Dash Eights, but I'm almost certain it's exclusive to the. Uh, to the CRJ 200s. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has advised that we are now cleared for takeoff. We're on the runway. I guess we can put our transponders to on. We'll get the rest of our lights on here. going to use all of this runway. Alright ladies and gents, enjoy the departure. Throttles up 40%. Disregard that warning. I think that has to do with the trim. Flaps 8 is indicated and set. We don't need to worry about that. And V1. And rotate. And positive rate of climb gear going up. And we're going to go ahead heading mode. And we're getting a little blown off course here. Speed mode indicated and set. You can go ahead and stick the autopilot on. Yeah, I think that had to do with the trim. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. Anyway, aircraft is doing its thing, looking for heading 150. Let's go ahead and increase the speed. And let's 
to confirm 80, 38,000 feet set, flaps one. Kind of off the, uh, kind of off course there if you look at that. That's why our heading's all messed up. Probably an airport problem. And we're going to go flaps clean. I wonder what the aircraft had the heading. It's 254. No. I don't know. Anyway. Let's go direct Ovata. Let's go ahead and make that turn. Speed 250 is indicated. And climb thrust is set. Cannot forget climb thrust. I always find that my mic is muted from time to time. I'm sitting there talking to myself. But uh, but yeah, nice little aircraft. I highly recommend it. It's something different. Keeps you on your toes. Flies way different than the uh, Flight Sim Studio E-Jets. But you know, every aircraft has their own sort of thing. Make sure we keep the uh, seatbelts on for now. And uh, we're climbing up 38,000 feet. Gonna take it all the way up top, and I'll catch you all in descent into Vancouver. Let me just double check the winds before we go here. Uh, the winds are zero nine zero at nine knots, so we are still expecting the zero eight right approach. Can't wait for that. Should be spicy. I believe we're gonna fly over downtown Vancouver as well. So, we'll see what happens. We'll catch you all in a bit, ladies and gents. Enjoy the rest of the video. Peace.
What's going on, ladies and gents? Welcome back to the video. You're on the descent into beautiful Vancouver on the Canuck 5 arrival for runway 08 right. Uh, we're descending down at about 1,700 feet per minute, just passing 21,000 feet. Uh, we'll have a look at our arrival here. So there are some constraints here. Uh, at uh, LAN or LANI, we got to be between 10 and 14,000, max 250 on speed. But VTAV, we have to be below 21,000, which we are. Uh, so we are descending beautifully down. And then basically, it's just a pretty much uh, downwind towards final. Um, zero 08, right? This is what it looks like. Uh, we have our nav frequency 109.5. Minimums 209, trans out 18,000 feet. And it's a standard arrival sort of into Vancouver. Once we get there, um, probably going to be looking to vacate. Delta 3. From Delta 3, we'll backtrack Delta. And we're looking for Gate 29. Gate 29 is right here. That's where the real world aircraft last boarded from. Um, so we'll try to keep things as close to real world as possible. And the weather information the winds are 100 at 10, gusting 16. Uh, a few clouds of 4,200, scattered at 5,300, and then broken from. 16 to 21,000 feet. It's plus 7. Altimeter 3017. Um, we'll go ahead and set it now. 3017. 3017 set. Set and set. We have our minimums of 210 plugged in. Uh, we're descending beautifully right now at about 1,700 feet per minute. So no need to worry about there. If we follow our descent checklist, landing elevation over here is set. Fuel checked. Um, TCAS as required. Radar terrain displayed as required. And landing data. We'll make sure we plug in our V speeds. We'll set our V ref 141. Actually, no need to uh, no need to set that currently. We can do that closer to landing. Beautiful, beautiful. Showing us a little bit high. Uh, let's go ahead and keep descending on down. Let's get some wing views out here. Been a smooth flight so far, no complaints. Um, initially from Saskatoon, when we imported our arrival information, I did not. Uh, clear my discons for final so it's supposed to be radar vectors to final not doing that I've noticed not clearing your discons for final I had issues with the top of descent marker not showing up basically from Bubel so from Vinlo it was uh, radar vectors and then Bubel my top of descent marker would not show up uh, wasn't sure why it wasn't coming on until I realized I still uh, had that disc on there. I cleared it. And then uh, everything started to work uh, beautifully. So, uh, nice little tip there if you guys not really sure as to why um, Top of Descent's not coming on. All disc cons, as of right now, need to be cleared in the FMS. Um, we're going to keep descending down. We're passing 15,000 feet now. We'll get the throttles down to idle, close to it. It's always nice coming uh, coming into Vancouver. From Vancouver, we are going up to Yellowknife. That is for sure. And then we have three more flights after that. So we're almost done. So, LOC-1 is being tuned currently. We will disregard that. We're still following our FMS information. Um, let's go ahead and wind back the vertical speed there. And 
we're going to be flying over top of a uh, beautiful downtown area. We will definitely see it. You can see the airport out over there. Downtown area will be out here. Make sure to catch some wing views for sure. Aircraft slowing down to 240 knots. I'll be honest, I don't really like these wing views. Sorry, these engine views. Definitely keep the wing view. Great performance, by the way. Showing 116, 115 FPS. So you can see it's very smooth. Um, definitely recommend getting that next-gen mod. Just pay attention here. This is where the aircraft starts to get a little bit spicy. As we're coming up on 11,000 feet. Uh, we do have some constraints. Let me just pull up the charts again. Uh, so by land, we need to be at max 250. So we blew by that. And we're coming down to 240. And then the next speed restraint is at Vinlo. It says max 210. Uh, but we're looking very good on the actual descent. So no real complaints there. Coming up on 10,000. We'll continue on down. We're going to go to 3,000 feet. Landing lights can come on. Beautiful. We're losing some airspeed, so we'll get her back up. Approach checklist, Barrow is set, lights are on, passenger signs are on. Sink our heading here. Looking good. Beautiful downtown Vancouver. I always forget which uh, which airport I have. I know there's two different ones. FS Dream Team and I think Flight Sim Studio. I forget which one I have. I think it's Flight Sim Studio. There's the beautiful airport. Never been to Vancouver. I'd love to go one day. Here it's uh, very expensive. I believe Vancouver is also the most expensive place to live in Canada. I think they beat Toronto. So definitely a hard pass for me. Start winding the speed back to 210 knots. Again, another cons uh, constraint here, Aplex. We gotta be above 5,000 feet. We'll be well above that.
a beautiful view there. Just gonna quickly pull up my charts here. Just want to verify. Uh, glide slope will be capped at uh, 2,000 feet. Tav P for 2,000. That's where we need to be. Maintain 3,000 for now. We'll probably do a to go down our base, we'll probably do a direct tab P for 2,000. Got to be at 210 knots. Everything looking good. Final approach course, We are starting our base turn here. Let's get the throttles back up. Every time the aircraft turns, we lose speed. Descending down about a thousand feet per minute. One thing I could have done was put in my fix rings here. Forgot how to do it in this aircraft. There we go. Plug those in. Beautiful. Nav source, and where's that good old approach button? Localizer coming in. Coming up on 2,000. Flaps one. Speed one ninety. We overshot the lope, so we got to get the lope back in. As you can see, she's way off. It'll come back. It's 
to kind of help it there. Ten miles out. And we'll hit the approach again. Low coming in. It's coming in really aggressively. <laughs> I don't know if this is uh, this is going to work out. We'll have to find out. Flaps eight. Speed 170. We'll set our V-Ref. Glide slope coming alive. There we go. We got runway out in front of us. Beautiful. Just confirm our missed approach. I'll climb, uh, climb to 420, heading 083, then climb right turn to 2000. Then right turn direct the Vancouver VOR shuttle climb at uh, Vancouver VOR to 5400. And glide slope coming in. And we're going to go gear down. Flaps 20. Lights on. Before landing checklist, passenger signs are on. Thrust reversers, left hand and right hand are armed. Landing gear down. And flaps 30 indicated. Flaps 40 set. All right, ladies and gents. Again, there is no auto throttle. You have to make sure you adjust your throttle there. 1,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and take the aircraft. My aircraft. Feels bumpy. Getting blown off course here a little bit. Let's get her back in. Five hundred. Five hundred check stable. Four hundred. Three hundred. Continue. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Versus out. I think that was legal. Seventy knots. Manual braking. These gents, welcome down to Vancouver. A little more spicier than I anticipated. Gate 29. Please remain 
Aircraft felt very floaty there. We'll have to make sure on our next flight. Uh, we definitely don't float it out. Go ahead and make a right here. We're going to follow Delta. Uh, Delta over to Echo. Go ahead and start up the APU. Transponder. Stand by. Flaps retracted. Landing lights, nose lights. Strobe lights all coming off. And pro heats. Looking for Echo. We're coming up on it. Should be Echo here. Again, I don't remember what scenery I have. I will make sure to link it in the description. Um, if, it's S, if it's the FS Dream team scenery, probably get rid of it for the Flight Sim Studio one. Go ahead and start that APU. Looking for gate 29. I think we gotta go around here. Thrust reversers, make sure those are off. Kill the flight director. Lately, the flights have been, uh, in terms of weather, pretty clear. Definitely in, in Yellowknife, there's going to be some weather activity. Almost every time I land there, there's like no visibility. So hopefully, that is the case. Stand 20. I think I'm going somewhere over here. Problem is I just don't see. I don't see GSX. Unless that's GSX right there.
Taxi lights are off. Here's gate 29. Try to butter this. Parking brake on. Throttles. Over to shut off. Come back upstairs here. APU is on. Seatbelt lights are going off. Make sure the fuel pumps are off. Hydraulics can come off. Beacon light can come off. We'll turn off the air conditioning as well. Uh, let's come over to the aircraft here. Ground power is connected. We'll put the wheels and chocks in place and the boarding request requested. deboarding. There we have it, ladies and gents. Nice, beautiful flight uh, over to Vancouver. Forget which leg this is. Probably leg number five, maybe six. Uh, a couple more legs left. I think we got four. Four more legs, yes. I just counted in my head. Um, once again, ladies and gents, I want to thank you for uh, coming out and showing some support on the channel. Showing the love, as always. Next flight, Vancouver up to Yellowknife and uh, we will be in the RJ again for that flight and I'll catch y'all in the next video ladies and gents enjoy the rest of your week peace